um, earlier this week, and you've said numerous times, it's going to take a bipartisan solution to fix the immigration situation. Why are there no Democrats with you today? Did you invite them? Well, about uh, six weeks ago, I was with a bipartisan delegation in El Paso and, uh, and in uh, Yuma, Arizona. Um, as I said, this is the 10th group of senators I've been with to come back, come down to the valley. And that same bipartisan group that visited El Paso and Yuma uh, a few weeks ago is, is going to uh, Mexico City uh, on March the 19th uh, to visit with President Lopez Obrador and to visit with the leadership there to see if there is something we can do together. Uh, the fact is uh, Mexico is our largest trading partner and um, the, the, the healthier the economy in Mexico is, the better it is for the United States. But right now, the Mexican government is overwhelmed in terms of their ability to, to push back on the cartels that are controlling so much of the drug traffic and the human trafficking there. So I'll stand by my words. The most to, to get something done, it is going to take a bipartisan solution, which means we need some help from President Biden and Vice President Harris. But we're here because we care, and we're all willing to to pitch in and do our part, but in the end, it will take a bipartisan result. Senator, yes, what's sir? your perception? Do you think Border Patrol is ready once Title 42 is no longer used? Well, Title 42, of course, is the public health title that uh, implemented during COVID, and it is one of the tools that's important that Border Patrol has been able to use to turn back, particularly uh, adult males. As you know, some of the, uh, the unaccompanied children and the families are exempted from that Title 42. Uh, the Biden administration has issued some new uh, proposed rules that will go into effect in May, and we're looking at those very closely. Um, but the problem is, as you've heard from my colleagues, we don't necessarily need any more laws or any more rules. What we need is the Biden administration's will to enforce the laws that are already on the books. There are procedures in place where our Border Patrol uh, professionals can expedite the removal of people who have no legal right to come into the United States. And there are ways we could expedite the consideration of asylum claims without the terrible policies of catch and release, which do nothing but encourage more and more people to come because they know they're ultimately going to be successful under the current policies. So um, we're, work, we're looking very closely at what the Biden administration has, has uh, proposed, but my, my, I'm sorry to say that uh, just passing some more rules uh, is not going to be a substitute for the lack of will to actually enforce the law. Like the use of the CBP-1 app? Pardon me? Like the CBP-1 app? Well, that's, that's one piece of it. If we can get people to come across the ports of entry rather than between the ports of entry, that would be, that would be a good thing. But there has to be some consequences associated with people trying to come through the, uh, between the ports of entry and claiming asylum. Because right now, when they call home, or when they watch on TV, they see that people doing that are successful in making their way into the interior of the United States. And as we've heard time and time again from the Border Patrol, what encourages people to come illegally uh, and outside of our regular legal immigration paths is the sense that there are no consequences associated with doing it the wrong way. And the only people getting rich over this are the cartels who care nothing about the people and uh, unfortunately the, the, the families that are suffering the overdose deaths because of the drugs that are coming across the border are paying a heavy price for the failure of the administration to simply enforce the law. Go Senator back to Cronin, the Chinese. you and uh, 